नमस्ते ग्रीटिंग्स टू एवरी वन वेलकम टू बी टी यू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम द ई लर्निंग प्लैटफॉम अंड विश्वेश्वर टेक्नोलॉजिकल यूनिवर्सिटी बेलगामी कर्नाटक ई डॉक्टर दक्षाणी आर पाटिल वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर बींग हियर ई एम असोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट बी एम एस कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर बैंगलोर द कोर्स वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग इज बिल्डिंग सर्विसेस एंड एयर कंडीशनिंग एंड मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेशन एयर विथ सो दिस बी टी यू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम फ्लोटेड वंडरफुली बाय बी टी यू ई लर्निंग सेंटर फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ ऑल स्टूडेंट्स सो अंडर द बिल्डिंग सर्विसेज थ्री we are going to handle modules 1 and 2 lecture sessions module 1 mechanical ventilation and air conditioning uh, introduction has been covered uh, we are uh, <coughs> currently handling air conditioning systems module 2 so this particular lecture session number 3 under module 2 we will be understanding the unitary systems under the air conditioning systems the syllabus overview so module 2 has two uh, sections air conditioning systems and specialized ac systems so we are uh, doing the air conditioning systems section 3 we are going to do the window ac component uh, in this session the list of references to be acquainted with so what is a unitary ac system so that is what we are going to begin with and i will be covering this following aspects uh, the objective is to understand these uh, aspects under unitary acs so what is the meaning of a zone and a system in air conditioning single zone system types of ac systems uh the unitary types we'll uh, see an intro to that then we will focus on understanding in depth the window air conditioning system with respect to the components in the system and working and installation so air conditioning zones and systems what do we understand by these terms a single zone system is one in which uh or a system which can air condition only one zone in a building that's why single zone it could be a room it could be a limited space basically multiple zone system it can condition a number of different zones so single zone is a, a room or a set of rooms which have similar demands of air conditioning so the parameters are uh, uniform or constant multiple zone system one or more zones each zone with its own parametric requirement so it is essential because as architects when we design a building conceptualize a design we have to address this part of hvac uh, designing and planning as well so zoning the building as per the load requirement is essential uh, as a lecture has been conducted on this uh, previously in the module 1 so based on the cardinal directions north south west east and the activity in that zone uh, in that particular space or set of spaces zones are created so if we do this exercise at the concept stage itself the building is going to be uh, compatible with the hvac and energy efficient as well how do you define a zone <coughs> an air conditioning zone is a room or group of rooms in which comfortable conditions can be maintained by a single controlling device a single control is 
going to handle or create the ambient indoor comfort levels for a set of rooms. Hence, it is collectively called as a single zone. A single zone AC system has one thermostat automatically controlling one heating or cooling unit to maintain required temperature in a single room or group of rooms. So we will call it as the zone. A very uh, basic fundamental unit is the window AC or the unit AC. It applies only to a single room. So now we will understand the uh, working of a window air conditioning unit. Uh, colloquially or uh, synonymously we also call it as a room unit or unit AC. The word unit uh, referring to a single entity. So window ACs. Now there are two possibilities of a unit AC or a room AC or a window AC. It could be a window unit or it could be a through wall unit. The names itself indicate window AC fits in a window and sits on the sill. Sill is the uh, bottom component of the uh, window opening uh, which is designed to be sturdy with a good PCC and uh, a finish on it. So window AC unit sits on the window, in the window on the sill. Through units, they fit on an outside wall of the room or the building. They have an opening which is designed to be so and uh, the unit sits there. Most uh, often it is under the window sill. So continuation of that opening becomes the through wall unit. Now all the components of the unit are embedded, arranged in a casing, in a box. So what are the components normally? Uh, we can recollect at this point that refrigeration cycle is the basis for air conditioning. So all the components in the sense evaporator, condenser, compressor, filters, motors, fans, controls, all these, the piping through which the refrigerant flows, the damper, uh, yeah, thermostat, all these are arranged, embedded in a casing, in a metal casing. And they are factory assembled. Dampers are the small openings or small shutters or doors that can be adjusted so that only room air can be brought through the conditioner. So somebody has to control how much air, what air is coming in and out of the system. The damper is the one which does it. Uh, in the next image, I am going to point out the damper. Window ACs come up to 3 tonnage, 3 TRAs, ton of refrigeration, the unit for uh, refrigeration and AC, 3 TR capacity up to. So 1 ton available, 1.5 ton available, they all sit on the window, uh, sill. Some more images. I am going to explain these components that we are seeing and how it functions ahead. So sometimes the window might not be able to hold the weight of the AC or uh, it's extruding then we need to support it with a uh, added support as this. And normally the window AC tilts a little to the outside because there is going to be water collected in the tray. Uh, as the air reaches, refrigerant reaches its dew point temperature. So we need to tilt it a little outside. So window ACs uh, can be retrofit in existing buildings, old buildings. Or when the new building is designed, uh, if it is planned that window ACs are the mode of uh, air conditioning, designing happens keeping that in mind. So these kind uh, which are retrofitted probably wouldn't um, uh, 
pay attention to the aesthetics so window ACs are one of the items that impact or mar the aesthetics of a existing building if you are designing a new one uh, that can be thought of and uh, the facade modulated for it to be accommodated then you can also do a quick uh, research or a market study it doesn't take much time uh, you will see various uh, service providers Voltas, LG, Samsung and they range anywhere uh, as this uh, they also give specification on what is the tonnage right so 1.5 ton, 1 ton most uh, certainly up to 1.5 is what we use beyond that it starts to uh, formulate as a split AC or a package AC or a central AC they also give uh, the energy efficiency ratings for these they will have a code model code they will tell what year it was released 5 star highest st uh, energy efficient rating Then also there are new players like Lloyd, there are Panasonic ones, Blue Star. So the components are standard. The way they are uh, packaged, manufactured is unique. So some will say it comes with remote, so probably it costs more some have better rating more tonnage uh, so the specifications matter you can also do a quick uh, market study on uh, any platform google or flipkart uh, you will find many variables so window ac is the simplest form of ac system the most basic form for example, when we did our mechanical ventilation uh, lecture in the first two sessions of module one, what was the basic uh, form of mechanical ventilation? Right, the ceiling fan. And then we had the supply system, or it, uh, what was it, balance system, evaporative cooling. So window AC is the simplest form of a air conditioning system. It is factory assembled and comes in a casing directly assembled and ready for operation in the space in which it has to be installed. So get it from the factory and assemble it, ready for operation. Installed on window sills or wall openings. It is used to provide AC to a particular space such as an office, bedroom, living space, dining room, etc. There are two main parts to a window AC, that box which comes it has a indoor part and the outdoor part. Indoor part is also called as the room side or the cooling side. Outdoor part is the heat rejection side. So from uh, that is the heat from the inside is taken and thrown to the outside. Both are separated by an insulated partition within the casing. So this is how it will look. And the line that I have drawn, uh, this smaller part is for the indoors, inside the room. The back side, the larger one is the outside part. So blue one is the supply air, cooled air which is coming inside. Red arrows mark the uh, used air which has to enter the system to be uh, conditioned. So indoor part will comprise of evaporator. Please remember it is also called as the uh, cooling coil. Air filters. Filters are behind this. Front panel. This surface is called as a front panel. In that this is called as a supply air grill uh, which is getting the cooled fresh air into the uh, clean air into the room. This is the return air grill, the red panel here. Operating panel, this one, if my arrow pointer is seen, which has a thermostat, which is knobs, levers, etc. And a thermostat sensor here to sense the temperature of the 
room. Outdoor part, this backside part has a compressor, condenser, they are the main parts, uh, main working components, fan motor, propeller fan. Alright, is that clear? The indoor part, the outdoor part. What we understood here is the components in the two parts. Now, as a unit, uh, window AC, uh, those are the components, but as a unit, what is the mechanism that is going to be expected in a window AC? First one is the refrigeration system. It's most certainly vapor compression refrigeration, um, which we have studied in module 1. Electrical protection system, the system runs on electrical energy. So there has to be a system to protect against electrical mishap. Control system, the user interface, how the person, uh, you and me, use the window AC for our comfort. Thermostats, which is levers. Air circulation system, uh, fan motor, evaporator blower, fan for air cooled condenser. So without these blowers, motors or fans, the air wouldn't know where to go. So these are creating the required suction or thrust of the air. The ventilation component, one is dampers, the small shutters or openings to let in the fresh air into the system and exhaust system to give out the uh, exhausted air. So AC always will have uh, an ingredient of fresh air coming in for ventilation purposes and removing the exhausted air. Window AC operates on 230 volts single phase AC supply and you can expect 0.5 ton to 3 ton, ton of refrigeration, sometimes TON also will suffice, no issues. So it is uh, good if you can look at some of the market products like I showed and see to what tonnages you will get, the price ranges also similarly, the capacities of course uh, lower on 0.5 and more in the 3 ton. Based on the room size, you will be deciding what is the tonnage. So coming to the most important part now, uh, what are the two cycles that are involved here? Like the two sides of the uh, unit, we have two cycles, room air cycle and hot air cycle okay now uh, just concentrate on what i am explaining or pointing at uh, with the cursor so what you see to the right side is the plan of a ac system what you see to the left is the section so i will begin with the plan part uh, be focused on this part here so this that particular line is the wall that we are talking about, indicating that that is the uh, building edge. So you have indoor component and outdoor component. Alright, now this is the box or the casing of the unit, right? And in between that you see here, this particular line is the uh, insulated boundary between the inside and the outside. Now inside component is uh, promoting cooled cleaned air so and backside component is having the hot air and the outside air. So if you did not have this insulated partition there would be mix up and the efficiency of the cooled cleaned air is compromised. So for that reason we are having an insulated partition between the two. Now towards the indoor side, you have the filter, you have the evaporator coil, which is also synonymously called as cooling coil, alright? And then you have the blower, is that clear? So indoor uh, component, you have the filter, you have the evaporator coil and the blower. Now at the back side, that is the uh, outdoor component, outdoor part of the window AC, what can you see? You have the compressor, right? You have the motor, fan, 
and the condenser coil. So evaporator is a coil, condenser is a coil. So condenser at the back, at the back side. Alright, is that clear? The components that are embedded in the indoor part and the outdoor part of a window AC unit. So if you go to the section now, where is the section line? XX. So we are looking from this side to that side. So indoor, what did we have? Air filter. Behind the air filter, you have the evaporator coil. Behind that, you have the blower wheel. Okay, and this is the uh, insulated partition inside, outside. So outside component has uh, the condenser, fan motor, drain outlet, propeller fan and the compressor. All right. So between the uh, indoor and outdoor components, the insulated partition has a small opening which is regulated when required. It's called as the damper. So this is the one which I spoke about. It will be somewhere here or here. Damper is a small opening outlet to uh, mix up the two only when essential. All right. So, are we clear with the components in the indoor and the outdoor? I hope so. Now, what happens, a little precisely looking at it, you have the air filter. Behind the air filter, you have the evaporator coil and there is a small drain pan here. Because once the refrigerant reaches the dew point temperature, there is dew formulated on the coil and that trickles down to collect in the drain pipe. It has to be uh, cleared uh, often. Then you have the blower fan behind the evaporator which will create the suction to pull in the room air into the system via the filter and the evaporator. So front panel is on this side, it's clear, back side cabinet, damper, condenser, fan motor, drain outlet. Uh, so that's why because the water gets collected you need to tilt the unit a little to the outside. Otherwise, the water is going to fall into your room. So, when there is poor workmanship, uh, you will experience water leakage to the window AC unit. Do not blame the unit, but rather the person who has installed it. Propeller fan here to create the suction again for the air movement. Uh, base pan is there. So, this is reading the section. Now, reading the uh, plan. Are we clear? So, coming back to the plan again. We will go to the right side. Now these arrows mean the used air. Alright, used air. The blower fan, when you switch on the unit, the blower fan is going to initiate. It is going to create the suction power for the used air to enter this unit. Otherwise, how would the air know how to enter into your unit? Not possible. So the blower is going to create that suction energy so that air enters the system. So what is the first point of interaction? It is a filter which is uh, located there. So air passes through the filter. What happens at the filter? Cleaning of the air. So filter is basically a, a very thin uh, material mesh like, of, mesh -like uh, in its integrity. It has interstices. You remember uh, how you sieve your tea or flour wheat flour or rice flour. So that has interstices. When you do that, any particle that is bigger than the size of that hole in the filter, that's called as the interstice, will get arrested at the filter. So that's how you are uh, cleaning the air before passing it through the evaporator. Now, as time passes and the impurities get stuck to the filter, it is going to clog the filter. So this has to be cleaned periodically. Otherwise, it is going to backdrop the dirty air back into the room. So that is the point. So once the air passes through the filter, uh, blower fan is already creating the section. Then it passes through the evaporator. So evaporator has two coils. One in which uh, the uh, refrigerant is flowing and another in which a fluid, cooling fluid which takes the heat from this air to it. Then, after that, the cycle is similar to a refrigeration cycle. It passes uh, through the compressor, condenser, and uh, the whole refrigeration cycle is seen in the picture here. 
the condenser also has two coils refrigerant coil and the uh, fluid which will uh, now give the condenser will take the heat from that air and uh, give it to the outside as condenser discharge air now condenser coils are very hot because they are taking the heat from the air so to cool that we have seen we need to have it uh, have water or air to cool it so in this instance we are using outside air to cool the condenser so it is a air cooled condenser so to ext to put that uh, outside air we need the motor and the fan and it blows on the condenser coil to cool it and hot air is discharged at the back that's why when you stand behind a window ac unit at the back you will feel the warmth that is the heat from the inside is giving to the outside to the outside so that is the cycle uh, here also you can see that so dampers will open and close when we only when uh, we need to bring in that influx of uh, outside fresh air into the system so you will need to draw the plan section and label them precisely all right you can also draw schematic uh, representation this i have picked up from edward peters book page number 317 uh, on how to show this it's wall outside inside you can indicate it graphically symbolically as well this one is fine this one also is fine as long as you have arrows and labeling the parts clearly air filter evaporative coil evaporative blower the insulated partition in between motor condenser fan the condenser coil compressor outdoor coming in from either this side or sometimes out to the side also condenser discharge air or you can also draw like this this is i have taken from uh, shri p n anant narayanan's book fourth edition page number 283 Uh, this also is fantastically fine you have the evaporator coil uh, you have the condenser the fan motor dryer filter capillary tubes to uh, to the, for the refrigerant to flow accumulator for the refrigerant to collect compressor so schematic layout it is Uh, it is uh, perfectly fine if you adopt any of these indicative uh, schematic diagrams as plan and section as long as you mark the uh, components mark the arrows flow of air direction right and um, make it sensible in the right sequence of course what has to come where very essential to know the to know your refrigeration cycle uh, precisely at this point it's the same thing which is going on this is a view of the same for visualization so this is the wall uh, okay then you have the evaporator coil which is shown here red arrow indicates hot air from the room entering the system and coming back as cool dry air so in this case dehumidification dehumidification is happening because it's a humid hot air evaporator you can see the dew point water uh, dew, dew drops collecting in the tray uh, then what happens is if you want to humidify the air this water droplets which are uh, dropping down from the evaporator get collected and the blower fan blows it over the uh condenser to cool it so that also is a good variation it's a very interesting point in this section if you see the moisture from the air is used to create the required humidity levels increase and also sometimes to cool the condenser compressor exhaust air so in this case if you see the outside air is not very red in color it is a warm usual uh, normal temperature air and then it comes out it cools the uh, condenser coil and comes out as hot air hot exhaust air 
The logic is simple. The heat from the room air is picked up by the refrigerant in the evaporator or the cooling coil and thrown to the outside via the condenser. So working of window AC, we have room air cycle, hot air cycle. I will explain uh, very quickly the room air cycle. When the window AC is switched on, it starts. The blower starts immediately, the one behind the evaporator. And after a few seconds, the compressor also starts. The room air, which is hot, which is humid, will pass through the filter. Filter is the interface between the room and the unit. After the filter, because of the blower suction, it is going to pass through the evaporator. In the evaporator, which has two coils, two processes occur. One, the refrigerant inside the cooling coil absorbs the heat from this air, used air. Room air gets chilled. Right? So, the temperature of the air drops. It's a basic property of heat. Move from high to low. It cannot be, uh, hot air is not destroyed. Only the heat is transferred from hot to cold. Now, second process that happens, due to the reduction in the temperature, some dew is formed on the surface of the evaporator because it reached its dew point temperature. Because the temperature of the coil is lower than the dew point temperature of air, isn't it? The moisture from the, uh, the dews are formed and the water, water vapor or moisture gets collected. Thus, the moisture from the air is also removed. So now, we achieved the required RH. We reduced the temperature. We also reduced the humidity, isn't it? Now, the temperature and RH reduced, that was our whole objective of the air conditioning and cleaned also through the filter. So, this cycle keeps repeating, this room air cycle with the inside part of the system. Hot air cycle, that is now we are referring to the backside part which involves compressor and condenser. It includes the atmospheric air that is used to cool the condenser because condenser is now hot. Propeller fan behind the condenser comes into action to suck in the atmospheric uh, outside air. The refrigerant in the condenser is very high temperature and it gets cooled by the air. In larger systems, you use water to cool the condenser. It is called as water-cooled condenser. When the atmospheric air passes over the condenser, it absorbs heat from the refrigerant and temperature increases. Since the temperature of this air is very high, it is called as the hot air cycle. Isn't it? It makes sense. There we had the cool air entering the room. So, that one here, hot air cycle. The refrigerant after getting cooled enters the expansion valve which controls the amount of refrigerant flowing into the evaporator and then the refrigerant goes to the evaporator. It's a refrigeration cycle. So this continues. Um, before I go, I hope it's clear. I will let the aircraft pass and then speak. Okay. So this, these two cycles keep happening in tandem. They work as a team to carry the heat and humidity from the inside air and throwing it out through the condenser. Which, that's why when you stand there, you feel the warmth. Next, a uh, very important aspect, uh, installation of the window AC. So firstly, now it's our uh, realm as architects, a robust wooden or aluminium framework is needed. 
to hold the system. We have to ensure that the window or wall can take the weight of the unit. So not all, uh, suppose say you are retrofitting it in an old building, uh, we must make, we must ensure that the wall of the window is going to hold that particular unit. Minimum of 30 centimeters space on either sides of the unit is to be left to draw the outside air. Uh, the back side of the window is C shouldn't be blocked with something or if there is no space, there is no point in installing it unless you have a minimum. That's a minimum, more is also fine. Uh, 30 centimeter on, on either side, that is on the sides to the left and to the right. To the back where the condenser is, we need 2 meters behind the unit for outlet of hot air by the condenser. Continuing, if there is any obstruction, like I said, on the back side or on the sides, hot air can short cycle to the suction side of the condenser, sadly. So condenser uh, where the outside fresh air is entering will again start sucking in what is exhausted. So that is going to reduce the efficiency of the system. Location for installation uh, should be decided keeping in mind the heat radiation and conduction. So we locate it uh, on the southern side and where there is no chacha or uh, there is a heater next to it. Uh, these things will impact the working or efficiency of the system. Supply air should be thrown across the length of the room. So length is the longer part of the room than the width. So your supply air or the unit uh, front part should face the longer length of the room. Height of the installation preferably somewhere between 75 centimeter to 120 because that is the occupied zone of the room, uh, above that it doesn't make sense. We should avoid installing it near heating appliances or next to a door which is often opened and closed in a space in a room or in a corner. So corner is getting all the cool air while the main places do not get. So very logical decision in installing it in the right central location is essential. A good earthing has to be ensured and right voltage to enter the system to avoid any mishap. Now I sourced this from Samsung website. They talk about the basic uh, <coughs> buffers to be left uh, uh, to the sides, behind and required awning, the front panel 75mm from the wall edge. Here it says 500 mm, somewhere between 500 to 2 meters. 2 meters is uh, ideal. The tilt approximately um, 0.3. Awning, a small cover to protect the unit from uh, sunlight or rain or anything dropping down. Leaves, animals, uh, birds sitting. 750 to 120. So you can draw this sketch and identify the buffer spaces ideally required. Let us now uh, list out the advantages of a window AC system. First thing is each room can be independently controlled with the required level of heating, cooling and humidity. Don't have to bother about what is happening elsewhere. Uh, it is specific to the room and uh, the, the room can be uh, controlled by this uh, unit. It is very uh, focused on the space. There are no ducts since it's a unitary system and everything is embedded in the unit. There are no ducts so no extra uh, skill required or space required or investment required. No plumbing work needed because it's not a water-cooled condenser. It's an air-cooled condenser. It is low cost, affordable, easy to install, no hassles can be used for both cooling and heating by using a reverse control wall. 
very beautiful. So it will reverse um, the functioning, the refrigeration cycle uh, during the winters. Performance of the unit is guaranteed by the manufacturer. So he takes the responsibility for uh, guaranteeing it for a certain period of time. Installation and operation simple and easy. Disadvantages. Because that unit is in the space in the room, noise and vibration uh, cannot be avoided. If the system is of a good calibration and the manufacturer has ensured it is reduced in some manner, fine. Otherwise, noise and, vib noise and vibration in the space. It requires an external window or wall opening, of course, for it to be placed. So your window effective area is reduced and the view to the outside probably. Aesthetically, it's not pleasing owing to this particular reason. Uh, the distribution may not be uniform. It might be in that particular cone of uh, angle from the uh, unit front panel. It will not help serve larger spaces. Of course, it is intended to be up to 3 ton, but uh, the most popular uh, capacities are 0.5 to 1.5. Beyond that, there are other options. <coughs> There is no flexibility in handling high latent heat gains. Therefore, does not give good humidity control. The latent heat gain is the one which uh, includes water vapor apart from the temperature rise, not the sensible heat. Latent heat uh, is not so much well handled, so humidification or dehumidification might not be very efficient. Air cleaning by the filters that we saw is uh, this bare minimum required because filters can remove large particles only. It's a mesh and it's not a very high quality HEPA filter or electronic filter. Basic filtering can be managed. In multiple usage, inherent energy waste toll is experienced because they cannot modulate the capacity as per the existing uh, climatic conditions. So there is a cause, uh, there is a a tendency to incur a more energy. Power consumption per ton is high when you compare the same uh, unit wise to a central uh, AC system. So to sum up uh, a small exercise to conclude the session, identify the components of single zone AC systems and their function. Conduct a market survey on window or uh, unit ACs at your uh, leisure. So get acquainted how the specifications are, what the manufacturer men mentions as a uh, civil requirement, right? So you can go through this as a sum up of today's session. Next lecture number four, we will be seeing the other three types of uh, unitary ACs, split, package and rooftop. Alright, so that's it on this lecture number 3. Uh, thank you very much and see you in the next session. Until then, take care. Bye.